Hello and welcome to this short video on using the SOLIDWORKS RX tool with me, Mars Brining. OK, I'm just going to go onto my desktop. What I'm going to do is, is show you guys where the RX tool is first. So if I go to my start menu and I go all programs and I scroll down, you'll notice that 2012 is in here. If I click on 2012 and then go to SOLIDWORKS tools, there's a whole load of SOLIDWORKS tools that are available in here. The one I'm after is the SOLIDWORKS RX tool. Now you may be asking what exactly does this tool do? The main reason for using SOLIDWORKS RX is to do diagnostics on your machine and SOLIDWORKS and also to uh, capture problems uh, that you may be uh, finding in SOLIDWORKS so you can send it to us or SOLIDWORKS themselves. And there's also uh, a section on system maintenance. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on Diagnostics. OK, so the first tab I'm going to have a look at is the Diagnostics tab. So it has a number of ticks or crosses, depending on whether you pass or fail the different diagnostics that it runs on your machine and SOLIDWORKS. The first one here is probably what most people look at. Um, they normally, if you do ever have a graphical issue, it's always best to go and load this SOLIDWORKS RX tool. And it's got quite a handy feature here of telling you whether your current graphics driver is up to date. If it's not, um, you may want to update it. At the moment, mine's up to date, so I've got no tick button here that allows me to uh, download the files. If your driver is out of date, it will give you a link straight directly to the file. It means you can just download the drivers with one click and then run it from there. So it saves you um, having to look them up on the, the, either the NVIDIA, ATI or Intel websites. There's also a section here which is SOLIDWORKS uh, video card testing page. Um, if, you're, if you have a, a if you have a machine that is custom built, uh, sometimes SOLIDWORKS RX can't find whether your graphics card is um, up to date or not, in which case you'll have to look it up on this page here. It will give you a list on that page of um, graphics cards, uh, what's supported in 2000, at the moment, 2010, 2011 and 2012, and then tell you the appropriate driver version that you need to download it should also give you a link to that download. Other things in here as well, the operating system, whether it's supported or not, the environmental va variables, name to temp has been set, um, the temp directory, I've currently got 61 gig, I've got a lot of free space on my hard drive, which is good. Currently the backup directory has not been set, so that's one thing I may want to have to go and have a look at later. My journal file directory has been set. My hard drives have got a lot of free space, which is good. The amount of total system memory is good. OK. Um, sometimes it doesn't solve on all of them. Um, service pack database, it can't look up. It's probably because the server's busy at their end. So there's no worry, nothing to worry about there. SOLIDWORKS isn't currently running. It's always best to run this when SOLIDWORKS isn't running. Um, and also, lastly, it just have, has a look at your toolbox location. I've got mine set locally. Um, this machine I'm on at the moment is a laptop, so I like to use it outside the office. And so that's the best way to do it. I, I don't want to have to connect into um, a server to, look at, to get to my toolbox parts. OK. The troubleshoot tab is just a it's a list of help um, directories that you can, if I click on one of these, for instance, it will take me to the customer portal. At this point, I could log in, and then I've got full use of the knowledge base. So just remember, you have to have you have to have registered your serial on SolidWorks website to get a portal account and then you're free to have a look through the knowledge base at your leisure. So let's just minimize that back down. Next thing I'm going to have a look at is system maintenance. 
So things in here I can do is clean out a number of folders, such as the backup directory, temporary directories that SolidWorks uses, Windows temp directory, temporary internet files, and there is a few other ones in here as well. So clean the temporary files in SolidWorks data folders. Uh, I can select data uh, specific data folders to use. I can also defragment certain drives if I want to. The next one, which is probably the two one two main tabs you'd probably use in here, are probably either diagnostics to start with, and afterwards is capture a problem. Say that you've um, had a chat with um, us or your reseller, and you can't resolve the issue. What normally happens is um, SolidWorks will want an RX file from you. Uh, this is so you can reproduce the the error in SolidWorks and then submit it to them. The first thing you normally do is to create a video, which I'll do in a second. Next thing to do is package up all the relevant information that they may want to look at. So SolidWorks RX does this automatically for you. Uh, it does a number of log files, journal files, uh, event logging, um, and any other files that you want to add in, say the part file that you're having problems with. And then you could package all that up and then it puts it into a zip and then you can either send it to us or SolidWorks directly. So firstly, I'm going to record my problem. So before you record your problem, so always make sure that SolidWorks is closed. If I click record video now, it will load up a new session of SolidWorks for me. You'll give me this prompt saying capturing problem and ask me when to start recording. So I can go and just start recording now and maybe move this out of the way, say down there. At this point I can go and load, say, my part file that I'm having problems with or any strange behavior that I might be having in SolidWorks, capture it so um, the recorder can see it. And then when I'm done I can finish recording. If I go OK. It's now created that video file and it's added it into the package files. Okay, if I need to add any more files to my zip, I can click on Add More Files to Zip button. At this point, I can click Browse and add them in. No, it's already got one part added in here. That's because that was the part that was open in that session. So I'd imagine you'd want it, you'd always want to add this in because obviously the problem may be with the part. You may have nothing in here depending if you're just showing off um, user behavior. So say there's an interface, behavior's a bit odd. Um, you may not have anything in here. Okay, so if you need to add any more files, you can click this button here. I've already got one in here because that's the file that I opened with my session of SolidWorks, which I was recording. If I need to add any more, I can click Browse and then it'll add them in. Last thing I can do is package files now. It will then zip all the logs, event files, and my video into a zip, and then just name it. At this point, I can then go and add it to, say, my desktop, and go save. And it's then added them in. At this point, I'm just going to look at the last tab. So here's a another useful tab that you can use. You can start a benchmark in SolidWorks to see how your your machine, how well it runs SolidWorks and you can compare it to others. Okay, so I'm just going to close the RX tool now. Okay, at this stage I have my RX file here. So if I look in, t in here you can notice that there's a, uh, a video clip as well as all the log and information files that you need. At this point you could then just take the zip and then email it to either ourselves, y your reseller, or um, SolidWorks themselves for them to look at. So that concludes our video on the RX tool. Thanks for watching.